Good afternoon. I am uh, Professor John Nordling at uh, Concordia Theological Seminary, Fort Wayne, Indiana. And it's my great privilege to go through with you uh, the text for the uh, proper 29A, um, which is the last Sunday in the church year. And the text is Matthew 25, 31 to 46. But I'd like to begin with the collect of the day. So please pray with me now. Eternal God, merciful Father, you have appointed your Son as judge of the living and of the dead. Enable us to wait for the day of his return with our eyes fixed on the kingdom prepared for your own from the foundation of the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So, uh, talking about the uh, collect, um, I've underlined some things that I think are especially pertinent to the gospel uh, for today. One is Christ uh, returns uh, as judge uh, in today's gospel. And in the language of the prayer, he's the judge of the living and of the dead. And we do have the, the righteous, the hoi de kaioi, uh, for life everlasting, as well as those that are accursed and end up in hellfire, basically. Uh, enable us to wait for the day of his return. So that's what we're doing as Christians. And in the last Sunday of the church year, this comes to mind especially. Um, then with our eyes fixed on the kingdom prepared for your own from the foundation of the world. Um, this is again a kingdom talk, which is uh, so um, much used in Matthew's gospel. And I think the focus of your sermon also should be on the kingdom, that is what Christ has done, rather than uh, kind of the terrors that uh, the casual hearer might associate with uh, the return of Christ in judgment, because it, it can be quite frightening. So. Those are the things then that come to mind as we pray this collect. And now I think we can turn to the text itself. Um, Matthew uh, 25, 31 to 46, and I'm just going to read through it. Um, uh, one of the things about this text is that, uh, frankly, there's a lot of repeated language, a lot of repeated formulas. First he he, he kind of commends the righteous and then he uh, dismisses into hell, hell the, the, the accursed ones. So a lot of the language is the same. And uh, I've tried to show that by making little blocks on here. But before we get into the text itself, I thought it would be interesting just to focus on um, how uh, the speaker, who is our Lord, uh, Jesus, is described. First, he is... Uh, ha huyas tu anthropu, the son of man, um, which uh, is used, I think I counted up, son of man is used 31 times in Matthew's gospel. Um, Matthew 8, 20, 9, 6, 10, 23, 11, 19, 12, 8, 32, 40, and then <laughs> a bunch of other times as well. So it's very well uh, used uh, language. Um, and, and kind of Jesus, uh, even his uh, self-moniker sometimes as the Son of Man. Uh, then another way uh, that uh, the speaker is identified in verse 34 is Ha Basileus, the king. Okay, And uh, this, of course, connects very closely to the picture of Jesus' uh, kingship. Um, especially in his passion, how he dies, um, uh, uh, the king of the Jews, that's also in Matthew, and then some of the taunts that were thrown his way, if you are the king, uh, um, king of Israel. So that language is in Matthew 27, 11, 29, 37, and 42. Uh, if you look up those texts, you'll see that develop very well. Uh, this is uh, Christ in majesty uh, and indeed in judgment. 
So we see this picture develop very much here. So Basileus is used in verse 34 of the text and then also in verse 40. We don't need to scroll down to see that, but I've put the speaker in red. And then um, if you can scroll down a little bit, John, uh, just till I tell you, yeah, that's far, that's far enough. And then in verse 37, uh, then the righteous will respond to him saying, uh, Kyrie, O Lord, okay, uh, uh, acknowledgement of who he is. And this, of course, is also what the, uh, the damned say in verse 44. They say, O Lord, Kyrie. So it's kind of an interesting um, uh, antiphonal uh, type of thing. Uh, like I said, repeated language. Okay, scroll back up to the top, John, now. Um, so, uh, and, and then uh, another, uh, uh, well, uh, okay, let, let's just get into the text itself and work through it. So, um, and whenever the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he shall sit on the throne of his glory. So that is a kind of a framing device that establishes the, the situation. Uh, Christ is coming and, and sitting on his throne in judgment and, uh, and with his angels, okay? Um, and it's very uh, hard for the hearer not to put him or herself kind of into that same position. Um, Verse 32, and uh, uh, panta ta ethne, which I've made blue here, all the nations uh, shall be gathered soon akthesantai before him. Um, all of the nations should strike a resounding chord because in Matthew 28, 19, which is at the very end, the church uh, uh, in, at the ascension of Jesus is commanded to go ye therefore and make disciples of Panta ta ethne, all of the nations. So here, uh, this I would say is uh, uh, kind of uh, looking forward to the end when many of the nations have been brought uh, to Christ or heard the gospel. You have this kind of forward-looking thing. Uh, this word, I don't know, I didn't really do the work on this, soon ak thesantai, but soon ago, it's from soon ago, shall be gathered uh, before him. Um, so it's a big deal. And, and what will happen then? Uh, kai aphorise, he will divide them from one another. And then we have this glorious um, simile as hosper, the shepherd divides ta probata apaton eriphon, the, the sheep from the goats. So there's going to be a division um, at this judgment. And again, your hearers hear this and they're frightened uh, because they know that they haven't measured up and our sinful Adam is afraid of this. It, it, it's, a, it's a frightening and awesome thing and, and that of course is part of this scene. Um, uh, one of the things I discovered while working on this text is this word for goat here in 32 um, from the goats, apaton eriphon. It only occurs one other place in Luke 15, 29 of the elder brother's complaint. Remember in the prodigal son, uh, him pointing out to the merciful father, um, you forgave my... Uh, my uh, prodigal younger brother, and you never gave me even a goat, okay, Eriphone. So it's, it's interesting. It's only used elsewhere there. Um, okay, uh, verse 33, and, uh, 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 and, and he shall position, uh, stase, a transitive verb, uh, the, the sheep on the one hand, dexion autu, on his right, and the goats, on the other hand, so you have a men de, he shall, he shall uh, uh, position on his left. Uh, that's how uh, ex you own known, 
how that is typically translated. It means uh, um, those on the uh, well-named side. So the left hand in Latin, it's the sinistra, like sinister. So uh, the righteous are on God's right hand, uh, uh, dexios, and the, the unrighteous on his left, the, the, the fearful one. And then the king will say, uh, uh, will say to those on his right. So that's where it begins. Now I've made these blocks. Okay, just scroll down a little bit, John, so I can point that out a little bit. Um, so you got this big block here, and in verse 37 you have the response of the righteous, and then keep going down. Uh, you have another block uh, here, and then you have, keep going down to 41, uh, those on the left side and what they say, and so much of this language is, is repeated, and then uh, the response of the lost here in 44, um, okay, and, and the point is that so much of this language is repetitive. Okay, you can scroll back up again. Um, I don't want to have it so small that, so that people can see it. Okay, so um, in verse 34 then, doita hoi eulogemenoi, so come um, uh, those that are uh, blessed of my father inherit Kleronomesete, the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Okay, so this is a wonderful statement. Um, uh, for I hungered and you uh, gave me to eat. I thirsted and you uh, irrigated me. You watered me. You gave me to drink. Epotisate me. Um, I was naked and you uh, welcomed me. No, 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 no. Uh, Xenos, I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. Um, I was weak and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Okay, so, so all of these works, right? Um, uh, so it's very easy, especially children hearing this, to assume, oh, I'm going to heaven because of the good works I do. Okay, so that's a problem you want to avoid. Um, so, uh, first of all, you want to develop this, uh, this statement, kleronomesete, inherit, uh, inherit the kingdom. Now, kleronomeo occurs also in Matthew 5.5, 5, in Matthew 19.29, and then here, 25.34. And we are all inheritors of God's kingdom, that is, we don't, earn it. It's a gift. Just as in the ancient world, um, the son inherited his father's patrimony. Uh, he didn't work for it. It was something that was given to him um, at, at, at uh, the day that he assumed the toga virilis, okay, the, the manly toga, and he came into his own. Uh, didn't work for it, okay. Slaves can't do that. Slaves do not inherit, but the legitimate children do, and that's how this is framed. So inherit the, the kingdom prepared for you. Okay, look at how that's phrased. Uh, uh, tain heitoi mas mene basilea uh, for you, this hemin, um, from the foundation of the world. Uh, then to be sure there are works that come from faith, as it were. Okay, so feeding the hungry, um, uh, watering the thirsty, uh, welcoming the, the guest, uh, clothing the naked, uh, uh, visiting the sick, and visiting the, the going to the one in prison. Now, one of the things, it's, these are all plurals. Um, I did this, and ye uh, visited me, and so forth. So Christ is the one all along, but it's done, as it were, by the congregation, by the church, by what we would call the works of mercy, okay? Um, so uh, uh, the, the, the church's ministry, what, what Christians do out of faith as they hear the gospel, receive the sacrament, and then, to be sure, act as holy people, 
Um, that's what is going on. Okay, the, uh, I, I'm seeing that I am running out of time, so let's keep moving. Uh, verse 37, then uh, the righteous, the hoi dikaioi, um, the righteous will reply to him saying, and then they say, sir, uh, when did we see you hungering and we feed you or thirsting and we watered you? Uh, when and when did we see you a stranger and we uh, welcomed you or naked and we clothed you? And when did we see you uh, uh, sick or weak or in prison and we came to you? Okay, so here, um, this is commonly made. Uh, I think they're, they're saying this because they didn't do these things self-consciously, but it is the result of faith, okay? It's, it's the growth in Christ. Uh, so they're not aware of doing good works or paying a, a, a lot of money. They don't give and they, and they don't work for that reason, but they, they do this out of faith, okay? So even the faith that God gives drives the good deeds that we do. So that needs to be said. Um, let's keep moving. And uh, uh, verse 40, and the king will uh, say to them, truly uh, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to the least of these my brethren, you did it unto me. Now I've underlined this phrase, to one of the least of these my brethren, uh, because I find it significant. Now, um, I did some work on this phrase. First of all, Elakistan, least, is used, um, uh, give drink to one of these, le these little ones in 1042. It's also used uh, little child or little children in 18, 2, 3, and 4. And, uh, and then, um, uh, so it has this association of being little uh, or least in the kingdom of heaven. It has that association. But this is the phrase, to one of these, uh, my brethren that are least. That's, that's kind of what it says. So, Adel Foy, who are my brethren? Now, I'm going to say something here that some of you might not agree with or understand, but I'm going to say it anyway. I looked up Adel Foss in uh, Moulton and Gieden and it occurs a lot in Matthew's Gospel. But one of the last places it occurs is in 2810, right after the resurrection, where, uh, 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 go and tell my brothers, go to Galilee to see me. This is what the risen Christ says. I, I think it's to the women, but the reference is 2810. So maybe what, uh, Jesus means here is uh, did it to one of the the least of my brother this could be maybe maybe talking about clergy support how we support the ministry and not neglecting that okay so that the ones uh, to be sure this is the church doing these works of, of charity and mercy but it proceeds from the office of the ministry I think you can make it. it, I know it's kind of slender exegetically, but it works. And this is not my idea, I've heard it from others on this campus, I won't tell you who, but <laughs> I like the idea very much. Uh, you did it unto me. All right, verse 41, uh, then he will say also to those on the left, uh, poor you is the op emu, so uh, get away from me, ye cursed into the fire, the everlasting, which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. What a horrible thing uh, to say. Uh, you need to point out that uh, uh, the fire, the everlasting fire, is not really intended for them, but it's intended for the devil and his angels. And, and God's heart breaks that this is happening because as he says to the righteous, he says um, uh, uh, the, the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. This is God's will that people go to heaven. 
that's the whole point of this. And, and it's been prepared, um, heaven has been prepared uh, from the foundation of the world from before Eden. And, uh, and uh, the fire, the everlasting fire, is intended only for the devil. Uh, verse 42, for I was hungry uh, uh, and you did not uh, give me uh, to eat. I thirsted, yet you did not uh, give me to drink. I was, uh, uh, I was a stranger and you did not welcome me naked and you did not clothe me uh, weak and in prison and you did not visit me. Now here, um, this is just typical uh, unbelief. Unbelief doesn't do any good works at all and unless the work proceeds from faith, this is what the scripture says in our confessions, the catechism, um, it's, it's no work at all, all right? So they have neglected these things out of uh, not just doing them, and to be sure, all people do good works, and they can rightly pride themselves on it, but it, it's the faith that, of course, really matters, and they don't have it, and so they are being dismissed. And then verse 44, um, then uh, also they will reply saying, okay, and it's a very short uh, uh, response, O oh, sir or O oh, Lord, uh, when did we see you hungering or thirsting or a, a stranger or naked or weak or in prison and we not minister unto you this dia con asum and soy. So, they may have been doing kind of diaconal works, if I can refer to them in this way, um, but they didn't notice. They didn't notice at all. So the first people don't, uh, aren't aware of doing works because of their faith, their genuine faith, out of which good works proceed. These people don't do works because, uh, uh, because there's no faith to begin. They just overlook it. Uh, so they don't do any good works. And if my theory holds about the least of these my brothers, they're certainly not going to support the office of the ministry or the church, see? And that's why the church is often so poor and impoverished in this world, because of the world's neglect and unfaith, okay? That's how I kind of put this together. Then finally, at the very end, uh, then... Um, he will reply to them saying, uh, truly I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do to, the least, to, the, to, to one of these the least, you did not do it unto me. So one of these the least, not brethren, but the least, that is, is not only not taking care of the pastors or the clergy, but not doing anything uh, out of faith for anybody at all. That's what that phrase is saying there. You did not do it unto me. And uh, these will go forth, ace colas and ionion, into everlasting punishment. Now this word uh, colossin occurs again only one other place in 1 John 4, 18. Perfect love casts out fear, for fear hath punishment, it says in 1 John 4.18. So it's interesting that it only occurs here in the only other place. Did, was 1 John aware of it, of it occurring in Matthew's Gospel? But then the righteous, hoi dikaioi, ace, zoane, ionion, into everlasting life. Uh, this phrase, zoe, Zoane Ionian occurs also in Matthew 19.16 to inherit uh, everlasting life in Matthew 19.29 and then here in 25.26. And then, of course, uh, life everlasting should make us all think of good old John 3.16. Whoever believes in me will not perish but will have life everlasting. So, um, it's really not about uh, works at all, but it's about faith. And what a glorious way to end uh, this church year with Matthew. We end on a very high note. 
Um, and we end with uh, the saints that are going into everlasting life, just as your hearers are, as you take them from fear and terror of not doing enough good works into the comfort of the gospel and, and uh, God doing everything in Christ through his blessed word and sacraments, and then to be sure we share a little bit in the works of mercy, and our congregations do. So, uh, I commend this uh, to you, and I pray that you will uh, very much enjoy uh, teaching your people with it. Thank you.